Chaim Weiss was a 15-year-old Orthodox Jewish boy, attending the Masivta of Long Beach, a yeshiva high school in New York. The morning after Halloween in 1986, the entire school was horrified when Chaim was found murdered on his dorm room floor. He had been bludgeoned to death after a sharp blow to the skull, and was repeatedly stabbed in the head. But no murder weapon could be found anywhere. Since there was no evidence of a struggle, it seemed likely that Hein was killed in his bed, while he slept before his body was moved to the floor. By all accounts, Hein was a very well-liked boy, so no one could figure out a possible motive for the crime. There were signs that the killer was familiar with the religious customs of Orthodox Judaism. Even though it had been a chilly night, the window in Hein's room was open a custom which is often done to let the deceased person's spirit out. After the murder, one of the school's rabbis left a memorial candle to burn in Haim's room. Two days later, a second candle appeared, but no one ever admitted to putting it there. There were no signs of forced entry anywhere, indicating the killer may have been familiar with the dormitory. During the night, another student on Haim's floor remembered being momentarily awakened when the door to his room was opened before it was immediately shut again. Could the killer have initially entered the wrong room by a mistake? After 28 years, authorities have never been able to find a suspect or any answers about why Haim Weiss was murdered in such a brutal fashion. Sixty-nine-year-old Marvin Brandland lived with his wife in Fort Dodge. On Halloween that year, the Brandlands were handing out candy to trick-or-treaters who came to their house. At one point, they answered the door, and were surprised to see a man wearing a mask. He said, trick-or-treat. Give me your money or I'll shoot. The Brandlands thought someone was playing a Halloween prank, and tried to remove the man's mask but he wouldn't let them. Instead, the masked man entered the house and pulled out a gun. He demanded that the couple bring him down to the basement and give him all the money they had stashed in their safe. The Brandlands became suspicious since very few people knew they even had a safe in their basement. For this reason, Marvin was still convinced that a friend or family member was simply playing a Halloween trick on them. When the masked man led the Brandlands through the kitchen toward the basement, Marvin made a grab for the gun. The intruder wound up shooting Marvin in the throat, before fleeing the house and inexplicably leaving his mask behind. His wife was so traumatized by her husband's death, that she died only a few months later. Over the years, an acquaintance of the Brandland family had allegedly bragged about committing the murder, so DNA testing was performed on the mask. However, there wasn't enough usable material for an adequate test, so there is still no evidence to charge this suspect, and Marvin Brandland's murder officially remains unsolved. On Halloween in 1955, Marilyn Damon took her two-year-old son, Stephen, and seven-month-old daughter, Pamela, to a supermarket in East Meadow, New York. While she went shopping, Marilyn let Stephen wait outside the store with his sister, who was inside a carriage. Ten minutes later, Marilyn exited the store and was shocked to discover that both Stephen and the carriage were gone. Shortly thereafter, the carriage was discovered about a block and a half away. However, even though Pamela had been left behind inside the carriage, Stephen was nowhere to be found. He has not been seen since. In many cases where infants are abducted, it's theorized that the perpetrator wanted a child of their own and decided to raise the missing infant under a new name. Over the years, DNA testing has been utilized in an attempt to determine if Stephen Damon was ever given a new identity. 
the investigators noticed that Stephen bore a resemblance to the infamous boy in the box. An unidentified child who was found murdered inside a cardboard box in Philadelphia in 1957. However, DNA testing would eventually confirm that Stephen and the boy in the box were not the same person. In 2009, a Michigan man named John Barnes came forward believing he might be Stephen, but DNA testing also ruled him out. It is possible that an adult Stephen might be living another life, somewhere under a different identity, unaware that he was once taken from his real family. However, his whereabouts continue to remain unknown till day. On the morning of October 31, 2004, a housekeeper at the Hilton Resort in Marina in Key West, Florida, found something in the garbage bin of the ladies' room in the lobby. She may have initially assumed it was a Halloween prank, but the situation became truly horrific once she realized she had found the body of a newborn infant girl. The child still had the umbilical cord and placenta attached to her body, indicating that someone recently gave birth to this girl and decided to just toss her into the trash. It did not take authorities long to figure out who was responsible. Hours earlier, a young pregnant woman and three male companions were seen walking through the hotel lobby. She entered the ladies' room while the men waited outside. At one point, a female witness went into the washroom and heard the pregnant woman moaning inside a stall. When the witness asked the three men if they knew the woman, one of them claimed to be her boyfriend. He even called out her name at one point, which sounded like Samantha or Sonia. The pregnant woman was in the bathroom for approximately 40 minutes, and a security guard saw her clutching her stomach when she exited. When the guard asked if she was alright, he was told she had gotten sick by partying too much at nearby Fantasy Fest. The four individuals were escorted out of the hotel, but the child was not discovered until morning. Fingerprints, blood samples, and DNA evidence were taken from the washroom and compared to several suspects, including Casey Anthony. However, the mother and the three men have yet to be identified, and no one has been prosecuted for the newborn's death. Chris Jenkins was a 21-year-old student from the University of Minnesota who visited a downtown Minneapolis bar on Halloween night in 2002. After leaving the bar around midnight, Chris vanished without a trace. He remained a missing person for four months until his body was discovered in the Mississippi River. Since Chris was still wearing his Halloween costume, all indications were that he died shortly after he disappeared. Chris was heavily intoxicated that night, and since his cause of death was determined to be drowning, authorities initially believed it was an accident or suicide. Finally, in 2006, the death was reclassified as a homicide. While the authorities have withheld specific details, they claim that an incarcerated suspect told them he was present when Chris was murdered and thrown off a bridge into the river. Even though police believe this man's story to be credible, no charges have ever been filed. However, one possible theory is that Chris Jenkins could have been a victim in the mysterious Smiley Face murders. During this time period, approximately 40 male college students in the United States were victims in a bizarre series of drowning deaths. In some of these cases, unexplained smiley face graffiti was found near the body of water where the victim drowned. This had led some to theorize these deaths are connected, and that the victims were drugged before being thrown into a body of water to make their murder look like an accidental drowning. While no smiley face graffiti was ever found in connection to Chris Jenkins' death, 
Investigators cannot overlook its similarities to many other unsolved cases.